Hello, thank you all for joining on Hennessy Sports YouTube channel from wherever you are in the world. This Friday night, Crystal Palace, we have a big show for you. Press conference right here, right now in Croydon. Like to welcome you. Got Connor Slater, matchmaker, with me here. We're going to be talking through the entire card, and we're going to have a lot of the undercard as well as the main event as Isaac Chamberlain and Dylan Prazovic. Dylan Prazovic just come off a WBO world title shot against Lawrence Okoli and Isaac Chamberlain in his last fight. Round one stoppage, so that one's guaranteed fireworks. Want to come to you quickly, Connor? The undercard's fantastic. As the matchmaker, which one are you picking out as the uh, the one to watch? I know Winston Campos versus Casey Benjamin is going to be exciting, but uh, which one's the best one for you? Yeah, I think as you said, um, it's going to be a really, really good night of boxing. Um, obviously, there's probably three or four really good fights on the night on the undercard that um, I think you, you can't really blink for. They could go at any second. Um, but I don't really think you can look past the main event. Um, like you're looking at world class quality throughout the, the, the two fighters' resumes. Yeah. Uh, Prasovic, okay, a lot has been made out of his, his last defeat to Coley, but you're dealing with somebody who not only got a world title shot, but actually built himself up to the mandatory position. He won the WBO Intercontinental titles, he's been in the championship rounds, and you know, he'll have every right to have every bit of confidence to, to really stick it on him and, and yeah. kind of redeem himself after the last time. Um, and even with, with Isaac, um, you know, there's so much made out of, out of Isaac's uh, pedigree from stories in sparring, his, his performances early in his career. But um, I think when you're, when you're looking at it, it's a, it's a really evenly match up, match up, So Yeah, I think the McKenna brothers stand out to me. To be fighting on the same card as your brother for a youth world title, they've got the world at the palm of their hands, specifically um, this Friday night, they've got a lot to deal with. Their first titles, both on the same card as well. You've got Stevie fighting for the IBF Youth World title, and then Aaron and his opponent, who are going to be coming up, fighting for the WBC Youth World title uh, at middleweight, that one. That is just so exciting. We've got Hennessy Jr., um, Casey Benjamin, I want to talk about him. His last fight, first fight, is super lightweight. Great knockout, body shot. Um, I'm going to compare him to Ricky Hatton. I know he'll be there on Saturday, so maybe you'll uh, remember back in the day when he was fighting in that division. Nice body shots. What a finish. Yeah, no, unbelievable. Um, Andreas Meyer, who we beat that night, yeah. is a tough game, durable opponent who's come over to the UK before and caused upsets in the past. But um, I think a lot has been made at the moment of you know potential fights for Casey. Sam Maxwell's name has been mentioned. I think Sam Maxwell's been mentioning his name as well. He's at F of you Moron on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, Casey isn't here, as I say, but uh, there's a lot of back and forth. And if Casey can put on a good performance, similar to the way he did on November the 13th, he could have some a big 2022 ahead of him. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think Winston Campos, um, you're looking at somebody who has 33 career wins to his name. So that can't be you know, looked down upon. Um, on top of that, the only people that have stopped him are, you're looking at Barroso, um, Josh Taylor, Giasov, the, the Olympic silver medalist, and even up at welterweight, you have guys with the pedigree like Josh Kelly, yeah. who, who kind of struggled with him. Josh Kelly left. didn't stop him, and, and uh, Winston Campos gave him a nice little eye cut in the first round as well. He was in the fight throughout. Um, so a big test for Casey, but if he can come through that, I think there'll be a lot of people. Sam Maxwell is open to a fight with Casey Benjamin, well, I, I from what I, we've seen. I think that a, a win and a statement win against somebody like Campos yeah. would probably put that, you know, Casey's resume up amongst all the best super lightweights in the in the division, obviously apart from uh, Josh Taylor. But I think the um, a win here and a win in fashion could really put himself amongst the, the best in Britain. Yeah, and obviously the one and only Idris Virgo uh, here once again <laughs> with some water, but his opponent isn't here, unfortunately. <laughs> Last time out, Idris was very close to stopping his opponent. He always says he wants the knockouts. But this time, I'm going to speak to him about how close he feels he, he can get to it this weekend against the Spanish prospect. Um, Idris will be coming up in a moment as well. Should we get to it? Yeah, and just, just even more, I'm just to go back on the McKenna's, because I, I really think yeah. um, these two fights for the McKenna's are, are going to be really, you know, might, might steal the show. Like you have, I think every time Aaron and Steve get into the ring, it could go at any second. And that's something we discuss as a team that, you know, I think when, when you're looking at the TV schedule, get a float in behind it because I think it could go uh, in, in any of the opening rounds. But I think with these two opponents, you're looking at Abdul Aziz Kwardi, who, yeah. you know, he's actually had more eight-rounders than Stevie's had fights. So he brings a wealth of experience. He, sorry about <laughs> He brings a wealth of experience to the <laughs> ring. Um, he's travelled over to Russia, so he's well-travelled before. He knows what he's doing. And he went over with a Russian 
uh, who was 33 and two, you know, years beyond where Stevie is at the moment, and held his own, won a couple of rounds, went the distance, and I think he'll have every right to to come back and um, and really feel his way into this fight. And even with Aaron, um, he's fighting a, a tough Mexican, and you know, something we discussed earlier, it's kind of 2021 is really the the year of the Mexicans. Mm -hmm. um, you had Maurizio Lara knocking out Josh Warrington in sensational fashion. Aaron's countryman James Tennyson got knocked out uh, yeah. by Giovanni Straffon. Uh, even the last two weekends, you had yeah. Isaac Lowe last weekend getting knocked out uh, by a Mexican fighter who came over to your call and put on a great performance. The weekend before that, uh, Jay Harris then at flyweight got beat by a Mexican again coming over. Um, so I think, you know, speaking to Carlos, um, Carlos Galeo's coming over here, you know, Boxing kind of produces these stories where, you know, speaking to him on the way here, this is his first time outside of Mexico. He's 23 years of age. He's coming over here, and this is an opportunity to, to change his life, really. And mm -hmm. I think uh, this is the first time that Aaron's probably be, been in with somebody who's just as ambitious yep. um, to, to, to get the win on the night. Without further ado, we'll bring up Michael Hennessy Jr. now. Good to see you back after a good performance November the 13th. You were peppering his head off for the entire fight. It was a good performance. You got a stoppage in the one, one before, um, but it was another good performance. First of all, how are you? How's things? Yeah, things are great. Thanks, Joe. Um, it's great to be boxing again before the end of the year. Absolutely delighted, especially to be down south, like locally, not too far from me. <coughs> um, should be getting a good good crowd there, and I can't wait to see the atmosphere. So. Yeah, kind of talk to us about the, uh, the match making <coughs> behind this fight. Obviously, eight, eight wins for Michael, 10 fights. Uh, we're, we're, we're close to a big 2022, but this one he needs to win in good style in order to get those big fights next year. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, you know, that's something that I know the guys behind the, um, in the background have been talking about and just getting that right opponent to, to really push Michael on until kind of the bigger title fights in 2022. And I think um, certainly the last kind of 12 months have been a punch perfect performances for, uh, for Michael. Um, so again, I'm looking forward to, to Friday night. Just on what I've just said, how important is this Friday specifically to put in a good performance? Because 2022 has potential. We know you're Mick Hennessy's son. You've got the name already, but you need to put in stable performances now to get those big fights. Uh, definitely. It's, it's always very important to me to put on a great performance. And um, I'll be stepping up to an eight-rounder in my first fight next year. So I want to I wanna look good in this one and have a good step up in, at the start of the year next year. So. How do you think you're going to progress up the in terms of rounds uh, I'll have a good few eight rounders I'm, I'm literally turned 22 a few weeks ago so I've, I've got all the time in the world and um, you know all good things take time so th there's no rush with me I'm young and uh, I plan on being a dark horse in this sport to be honest with you coming through slowly and quietly and then bursting on the scene at some point for sure do you feel like we're far away from that moment you bursting out the scene because you're at the level where, where you're fighting people who not many people have heard of yet but when you are, like I say, in 2022 fighting for those titles, do you feel like you're ready to put on huge performances? Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking to have some good step-ups next year and really make a name for myself in the, in the boxing scene. So, you know, it should be a big year, 2022, for sure. And how, how did you find the last fight in particular? You were in, as you said beforehand, the best shape of your life. You were lighter than you've been for a long, long time. Yeah, no, I was, I was very happy with the performance. I think I was a bit harsh on myself on the night. I was just uh, upset not to get the uh, get the stoppage, but um, he's a very tough man in there. And when I watched it back, I thought, you know what? It was actually it was actually a really good performance, and I was happy with it, so, yeah. And Fran, your sister, winning winning titles, national champion now, you must be happy. It runs in the family. <laughs> absolutely. I was over the moon for her. She boxed absolutely brilliantly. I got a little bit emotional, to be honest with you. And, <laughs> It's just it made it motivated me to push that bit harder because I'm the second in the family now, so I got <laughs> I got up my game a little bit for sure. Kind of this is this is a request from me to you. We need to see Michael in a big fight. Try and get him a title fight in 2022, please. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I'd love to see it just as much as you would. Um, I think he's going at a really good pace now. He started off his career so quickly, and as I said, um, he's had tougher matches than the most prospects coming through. And I really think that you know. Punch for punch, he's been he's been um, faultless really, and I know the team that he has behind him will really be looking to to just you know pick little pieces to make improvements and go into a big 2022. Can't do that without a big performance this Friday though, so look forward to it. Thank you for uh, thank you for joining us, starting off the yes, press sir. conference. Now we'll be joined by the uh, the one and only Mr. Love Island. Is that what we call him? <laughs> How's it going? How are we? Sound. We do what? We've got to keep this short and sweet. 
All right, we're on the that? schedule right about now, so let's keep this short and sweet. Let's talk us through the seat, first of all. It's all of the Peaky Blinders, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I'm part of Birmingham, so I thought I might as well yeah. interest the part. Now, you brought some water to the stage. It's only me and Scott, so are we safe? <laughs> no, you're not. That, that could be for me. <laughs> Idris, uh, good to see you once again. Um, let's go straight to your last performance last month, November the 13th. Before we talk about this Friday, you've got a Spanish prospect this Friday who you're fighting, and he's coming to fight, he's coming to win. That's going to be a good one. But on November the 13th, you were close to getting the stoppage. You look frustrated at the end. Do you yeah. feel as if it's a case of... You can't keep trying too much in order to get that stoppage because it never will come. And there's a bit of frustration there. Could you admit that? I'll admit it 100%. There was um, frustration um, in that fight. But um, it just proves in the pudding. As soon as I let my hands go, a knockout can be produced and a knockout can happen. So obviously for this fight on um, this Friday, I'm going to be relaxed, collective, and do the talking in the ring. How do you kind of calm down before fights? Because he, he talks a lot and not, of, not often... He, he might not always back that up. Do you have to kind of keep him grounded sometimes? Um, no, I mean, Idris in the gym is a, is a different character to, to what you see here. He's quite a serious um, dude who's, uh, who's, you know, he does everything we ask of him on the sparring and everything. So um, we've been getting results on that. It just takes time to, to get the crossover. So hopefully this, this, um, this time you will see more about where he's get going and how good he's going to become. What in particular have been been working on since November the 13th? Um, it's the same kind of stuff we've been working on all the time, but it's, it's just taking it time. You can do it in the ring, but you've got to then produce it on the night. Um, taking it to... He's, he's got to take it from the gym into the ring. Yeah. And my style is slightly different to what he's used to. Um, I don't believe we've really seen that yet, and uh, hopefully on Friday night we will. We'll see. Yeah, definitely, and I think Friday night in particular, you've called out so many people, Jake Paul, Nathan Heaney, Tommy Fury, KSI, you call yourself Mr Love Island. Do you feel like in order to back that up, you need a big knockout this Friday? Um, no, not, not really, because <laughs> the old killer yeah. fish ain't going to fight me anyway, because they know I'm a threat, you know what I mean? Any of their old YouTube fighters or celebrity boxers, they always know, no, I'm a big threat, so if I get a knockout, they're just gonna hide in the tin cans and be more shaking the legs, and the, they wouldn't wanna fight me, man, at the end of the day. Were you disappointed with how the Jake Paul situation panned out? Obviously, you called out Jake Paul when Tommy Fury couldn't end up fighting him, but Tyron Woodley ended up with the fight, you must be a bit disappointed. Yeah, I'm very disappointed because people think I'm just a reality TV star, just a love in there. I can't box, you can't do this, can't do that. Yeah, but look at my record, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's not a lot of knockouts on my record. So if you think I'm easy work, why not fight me? I that's the big question mark. What I, want, like, I want answers for that. Why are these opponents not fighting me? You know what I mean? If they don't think I'm all that. So um, this Friday night, let's just put a statement out there. Do you feel like sometimes you might put a bit too much pressure on yourself saying, like calling out too many people? No, because I know what I can do, you know what I mean? Um, I'm the one, the only, <laughs> the body breaker, so yeah. I'll back my words up. And the most recent uh, and the most realistic, if I was honest, is Nathan Heaney. Um, that's a genuine back and forth, and it looks like you're both open for that fight as well. Then again, another guy who's say they want to fight, Hennessy, uh, obviously we are, we are agreeing to fighting him next or whatever, but he hasn't made a phone call because they are scared. You know what I mean? Like, it's a simple phone call. I agree to fight him. I'll go to his back garden. I'll go to Stoke. I'll fight him in his hometown city. I'll fight him on Mars if I have to. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, whatever. But this Friday, regardless, you obviously need to put in a big performance. Do you know much about your opponent? Um, don't know too much about my opponent. Um, but same result's going to happen, as I said before. I'm going to win or I'm going to knock them out, and that's it. Unfortunately, Tommy's not fighting this weekend, but with Idris in the corner, obviously, coming to London, looking for a big performance... How much can we expect from Idris? What can we expect from him this weekend? Um, I, I think, ho hopefully, we see. Um, hopefully, we see. Um, we see a big difference in him. We see him settling into his work, um, and uh, I still see fireworks. So that's what we've been training for. So let's hopefully. 
get the win how we want to get it. So I believe you can do it. So let's let's put it together and deliver. Let's see it. That's it. So tune in, everyone, on Hensi YouTube channel. It's going to be a explosive performance by myself, the one, the only. Don't miss it. Get your popcorn ready. Get your wine ready. Make sure you put the kids in bed before the fight happens. But well, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's live and free. Don't miss it. He's got a lot to live up to. And the names that you call out, they can only come thick and fast if you put in a good performance this Friday. Oh, so not thank you. When? 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 We'll see. Live and free on the YouTube channel, the prelims, at uh, 5.30 p.m. And then channel five, it's live and free from 10.30. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have Stevie McKenna next, Irish prospect, IBF, world youth title at welterweight. This one is going to be very, very, very exciting. Fergal as well. Good to see you. Oh, yeah, good to see you, man. Yeah, Stevie, um, just speaking about you and Aaron, you've got so much to live up to, and you've spoken about the likes of Florian Marcus, the Ryan Garcias. Uh, you've, you've called out a lot of people, and you seem very confident, but this fight on Friday, this is where everything that you've talked about can be put into action, and, it, and if you put in a big statement, then you can finally look at those opponents as realistic. Yeah, this is a massive fight for me. I'm really looking forward to it. Looking to pick up my first title. It's a 10-rounder, and I'm more than prepared for it. I've trained my whole life for this. You know, this is my biggest fight to date, and I'm looking to put on a big fight and a big statement to all the welterweights out there that I'm coming from them all. Any of them that want to fight, I'm here waiting for them, and I just want to go in there and put on a destructive performance. You always say you put on a destructive performance, and you always do. The last time was your opponent was out there within two. But this one, knowing that people are going to have eyes on you, do you feel like it's important to get that KO for those reasons? Yeah, well, I just worry about what I have to do in there and just do what I do best. You know, any fight I go out, I go out to entertain and uh, knock the guy out. And I'm going to do the same on Friday night. What are you making of Stevie's recent performance and the fact that Stevie and Aaron get a fight for youth world titles on the same card, first of all, is amazing? Yes, yeah, definitely a tremendous occasion. It's not often you see two young Irish lads uh, getting an opportunity to fight for Irish youth belts, so they're certainly going to rise to the occasion. It's going to be a, a special time in the McKenna household because, you know, the boys have been training from their six and seven years of age and we're very optimistic and very confident that we can come home with them belts. You've called out the likes of Florian Marco, as I say, many times. What do you feel like you need to do to get that fight? Just keep doing what I'm doing, but I don't think you know, he wants to fight. There's a lot of guys out there, especially him, he says he'll fight anyone that he can't get a fight. I said I'll fight him. I'm here waiting on him, and I haven't heard anything back, so... You know. Well, I'm sure he's watching now. What's your message to him? I'm ready to fight whenever you are. But if you want to go down to 140 and hide, you know, you do that. But I'm here 147 and I'm staying. Do you feel like that's part of the reason he's gone down? Or do you feel like there is a potential for you to go down? Are you happy to go down for that fight? Or? No, I'm a full 147. I'm six foot two nearly. I'm a strong, hard-hitting welterweight. And, you know, he's only a wee small fella. He's probably better off down there with Conor Ben as well. He, he'd be as well going down. <laughs> Well, this weekend, though, like we say, you have to put on a performance in order to get those fights. What can we expect from you? Expect a devastating knockout. I'm, I'm going in there to do, do a job, and I'm going to bring home that IBF world title. And your brother fighting just after you as well. Um, it's exciting for you two to be fighting on the same cards, but to fight for titles on the same cards. Brothers in boxing can only dream of this. I, I can't remember this happening for a long time. Yeah, it's going to be a special night. Uh, the Irish are going to be in town, so you'll hear plenty of noise, and we want to bring the title back home to Manon, our hometown, and do all, all, our, all our family and fans proud. So we're going to bring home the titles. As a father, what does this, uh, this fight on Friday, both fights, mean to you? It's uh, definitely, as I said before, it's a special occasion. Stevie hit the nail on the head. He says, you know, the fighting Irish are going to be in town. We certainly, you know, with our, you know, with the boys' fighting style, it's going to be certainly entertaining. Uh, expect mayhem and fireworks, and God only knows what's going to happen. But we certainly intend to bring uh, life to the party. Certainly, that life to the party. It's not hard to go and look at their records and see what they do. They bring devastation every single fight. 
even if it's not a knockout, Aaron didn't get a knockout in his last fight, but it was a beautiful display throughout body shots, head shots that were lethal. Uh, and the way they look into the opponent's eyes at the start of the, the fight when the ring walks uh, are being made and the, the, they're getting announced, it's, it's entertaining to watch. So do not miss these guys. Watch their fights, their, their most recent. Stevie's in particular won't take you very long and it'll get you excited for this fight. 5.30 p.m. on the YouTube for the undercard and 10.30 on Channel 5, live and free, as always. Thank you very much, guys. Look forward to it this Friday. Nice one, awesome, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Joining me now, Aaron McKenna and his opponent, Carlos Gallagher. Nice to meet you, mate. Carlos. Aaron, good to see you again. Carlos, I'm going to come to you first. Um, obviously, traveling abroad for this fight. You're the away fighter. How do you feel being the underdog? Are you motivated? Are you ready for this fight on Friday? Uh, I, I feel good. Um, first, thank you for opportunity. My first fight of title. Um, uh, no, no speak English. <laughs> I speak English. Um, uh, my team is um, Canelo, Canelo brother, uh, Boxeo Alvarez. Um, I. Yo me siento muy muy preparado, listo para esta pelea. He este feels, he, he feels very, very ready for this fight. Mm -hmm. Sí, este mi, mis sparring son son unos grandes sparrings, eh, Changuito Macías, eh, uno un rankeado mundialmente en el peso mediano y yo creo que hemos hecho un campamento muy grande eh, de tres a cuatro meses. Mike Dana. Yeah, so he he's had very uh, big sparring, very good sparring. It's been a very big camp and he's completely ready for this fight. Eh, mi, mis entrenadores tienen una vasta experiencia. Aquí presente Alex Herrera ha estado en esquinas de título mundial y yo he hecho una gran una gran este preparación para pelea de de 8 10 rounds y pues nomás venimos a anunciar que estamos listos. He said it's this is a great experience for him. Uh, primera vez de afuera de México. It's first time outside of Mexico and he's yeah, he's so excited to, to be in the UK and to to be part of this fight. Does that worry you, being a Mexican fighter? Obviously, as Connor mentioned earlier, Mexicans often come to the UK. Mexicans in general, they always come for a fight and they'll often surprise people when they're not actually expected to. No, I know exactly what they're like and they're good fighters, the Mexicans. I'm not worried about what he's going to do. I'm fully focused on what I'm going to do. I've traveled all over the world and I've been in Mexico sparring the best there and all over America, and I've fought many Mexicans before, and I know what to bring, so I'm more than ready for this fight. What does it mean to you fighting for this WBC youth belt? Yeah, it means a lot uh, to finally fight for my first title. Uh, it's been a long time coming, and big thanks to Mick Hennessy for getting this done for me. I really appreciate the work he's doing for me, and I'll be ready come fight night. This is what all the hard work's been doing in the gym, and I'll be ready come fight night. Yeah, talk to us about, you were mentioning on the Hennessy YouTube page the other day about your inspirations, particularly about what you said about Mike Tyson. I thought that was very interesting when you're, uh, when you're making that ring walk and getting in the mood, getting in the zone. Yeah, that's it. Uh, that's the type of fighter I try to get into my style, him. I want to have his attitude, his attitude outside and inside the ring was amazing. Like He has his opponent beat nearly just by the staring into his eyes before the fight. So that's what I try to incorporate into my fighting style. A certain Keevan Ajarko signed for Eddie Hearn Matchroom Boxing very recently. Same weight as you. Similar levels to you as well. Obviously, a big fight on Friday and you cannot slip up. But are you, are you ready for those types of opponents and spe specifically? Yeah, I'm ready for any middleweight out there. I'd fight any top middleweight in the world. Any of Eddie Hearn's fighters, all his middleweights. Line them up and I'll beat them. Do you know about him as a fighter? I've uh, just seen a few bits in, of his fights. I haven't seen any of his pro fights, but... If we both keep winning, it'll definitely make a big fight in Ireland. A big fight in Ireland, certainly something that I think could happen uh, with the likes of Brett McGinty at the Hennessy Sports Table. I want to come to you first. He just, he just whispered to me that uh, when you were talking about them having the sort of attitude of, of Tyson, he said he doesn't know Mexican boxers. So he's, uh, he's very confident about, about bringing you a good surprise on, on Friday. Mis, uh, mis respetos para, para mi rival. Yo sé que es un buen gran boxeador, pero este, va a conocer lo que es el boxeo mexicano. Y de que estamos hechos los mexicanos realmente. He said that he's got a lot of respect for his opponent. He's a very good boxer, but he doesn't know Mexican boxers. And in reality, he's got a lot to bring to the table. And you know, you should be a bit worried. 
Well, I know a lot about Mexican fighters. Um, I fought a lot of Mexican fighters in my early days, and I spent uh, two full weeks in Tijuana, Mexico, and I sparred the best there. I sparred Jaime Munguia, the world champion at 154, now up at 160, so I definitely do know a lot about Mexican fighters, and I'll be more than ready come fight night, and he's going to get a shock if he doesn't know what I bring to the table. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't seem too phased by what you've just said. Um, Yo sé que los dos hemos hecho una gran preparación. Ninguno tiene miedo. Para eso estamos hechos y va a ganar el que mejor se haya preparado. He said, "You've clearly both done a lot of preparation. You're both ready for this fight. Neither of you are scared of each other. It's going to be a massive fight on Friday night." Anything? Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm looking forward to a good night. Thanks to my opponent for taking the fight while 10 others didn't accept it, so I'm f happy to finally fight for the WBC Youth World title. No holding back this Friday? No, I'm going to go in there and show everyone what I can do. I'm only 22 years of age, but I'm going to show them all that I'm very experienced and what I can do. Any final words? No, mi agradecimiento es mío por la oportunidad. Mi primer pelea de título y... Thank you very much for the opportunity, and it is his first title, and he's very excited. And uh, yeah, as he said, first time in the UK, so big, big fight for him. Thank you very much, both of you, Aaron. As, as we've said now, you've been calling out people for a long time. This is the time now. If you are successful, you'll have a target on your back, and those names that you call out will be closer than ever. So look forward to a great fight between both of you. Um, we'll do the face off. The eyes don't lie, that one is going to be very, very exciting. Co-main event of the evening, just before 10.30pm. Looking forward to that one very much. So, Isaac Chamberlain and Dylan Prazovic, the only two left to come. But beforehand, we're going to have Conor Slater, our matchmaker, and Scott Welch as well, to talk about this evening. Crystal Palace, Friday night. Tickets still on sale as well. It's going to be an exciting night. Conor, I want to come back to you. Aaron McKenna, that is uh, one scary fight. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a good back and forth between the two guys. Um, and I was looking forward to the fight before, but just seeing the, probably the ambition in Carlos up here, um, I'm sure he, he's coming to win and, you know, really, really eager to, to get, get the upset over here. Yeah, let's, let's go on to the main event. We're going to have Isaac and, and Dylan joining us very soon. Isaac's got a lot to live up to, obviously, with his former opponent, Lawrence Okoli. Uh, fighting him in his most recent fight, Dylan Pr Prazovic's most recent fight. He's going to be compared to him, but I feel like most importantly, he needs to get a good win under his belt. Yeah, I think he's um, he's proven himself as a real, real top fighter, Isaac, and he's coming through and he's looking uh, incredible. So um, I think he's more than ready to do the job, definitely. It's a world level fight, as you say. The winner of this is going to be near enough top 10 with the IBF. The IBF rank number one is vacant. So, you know, Marys Breeders may even be watching Isaac Chamberlain. He knows that he's got a big name and a big platform behind him. Who knows what could happen? Yeah, no, I think um, I think the cruiserweight division, especially domestically, would be um, looking out for this. You know, you have Chris Bill smith uh, Tommy McCarthy, Richard Riakpour, even Lawrence Coley himself, obviously being in with the two guys. So I definitely think the, the other <coughs> domestic cruiserweights will be, will be looking at this fight and seeing if Isaac will be able to take that step towards world title level again. It's exciting because they're almost guaranteed to see a knockout. Dylan Prazovic has 12 knockouts in his career and Isaac Chamberlain, his last three performances were all knockouts and his last one was at the end of round one. He seemed a bit frustrated because he wanted to get a bit more time in the ring, but maybe that frustration can be let out this Friday. Yeah, I, I don't think he'll be turning down a, a round one knockout this weekend, so... Uh, 
I think he'd be looking for more of the same. But no, I think um, the last three performances have been um, really exciting for Isaac, and he's shown shown glimpses of what he can produce. But uh, I definitely think he has to really get the best out of himself yeah. this Friday too. So yeah. the last show in the Midlands, we had Shaq and Peters and Reese Cartwright along with River, River Wilson, Bent and Tyler Denny. The show before that, we had the Sam Egginson fight. None of them were disappointed. All three of them were pretend. Sam Egginson was top fight of the year for me. And then uh, the, the fight on November the 13th, those two fights there were also very, very good fights. So the main events at Hennessy recently haven't been disappointed. So why shouldn't people tune in on Friday? Yeah, I think uh, pressure on for Prasovic and, and Isaac uh, to, to get another, another eye-catching fight. Um, I think, as you said, Sam Egginson's fight was an unbelievable war for, for the, the 12 rounds that lasted. I think on Friday night, this really could go at any stage. And uh, both guys are explosive punchers. And... Um, you know, I think I think it's going to be really exciting for different reasons than probably why Sam's fight was <laughs> exciting. And Scott, two of your people, obviously with Hennessy Sports and the stable, Tommy unfortunately won't be fighting, but it's a good platform to have him on and, and to be headlining these kind of shows within the next year. Absolutely. I mean, you know, who wouldn't want to be on Channel 5? Terrestrial. So, you know, Terrestrial TV. Um, we grew up with it. So these guys, that's what makes them household names. And um, to see to see these young guys coming through is fantastic. And uh, th yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing them. These guys can really fight as well, so it's going to be very exciting. So people will be missing Tommy. Obviously, he's usually the guaranteed knockout on this fight card, as, along with the McKennas. Uh, just a quick update: wh where he where he is and how soon he's going to be back. He's um, he, he, so two weeks ago I was quite ill. Um, I had a bad nose and all my head was congested and he's got something very similar. Um, he's got headaches at the moment and he he's doesn't feel right at all. So we said just have a few days out and then get yourself back and um, hopefully you'll, you'll get through it by over the weekend, probably a week or so. It's definitely not them for six at the moment though. So yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of bugs out there. So. But Idris... Uh, back on Friday, as we say, and he's certainly got potential to headline a card in 2022. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, let's wait and see. And, you know, I believe he's going to perform to the best he's ever he's ever looked. So, wait and see. Tune in. Make sure. <laughs> so what What do you make, as, as a trainer, specifically about the Nathan Heen fight? I do want to talk about it because they both seem up for it and it seems like it could be genuinely close. I mean, listen, Nathan Heen, he's a, a confident kid. He's... You know, he's showing that he's a confident kid. Whether he is, whether he really is, I don't know. Um, Idris is growing every every week in the gym. He's getting better and getting stronger and finding his feet more. Um, it's, it's, it'd be explosive. I think it could be a cracking fight, and uh, who wouldn't want to see that? So. And heavier your weight this time for Idris? Can't talk about me not coming to the stage. <laughs> Once again, on. heavier your weight this time round as well. Uh, no, nah, last minute opponent, obviously. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, opponents out there are afraid to fight me, so this is last minute, so only opponent will get at this certain time at a certain weight. Okay. <laughs> is there anything you were going to say there? No, 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 no. I mean, we, we just, you know, it is what it is. He'll, he'll come in, um, we'll do the job, and then the next one will get everything right again. How far are you from the headline show? Mr. Hennessy. <laughs> that question's for him, to be honest with you. I think you've got, um, you've got the promotional side of things unlocked, but there's obviously a big name that needs to happen, which is why I keep bringing up Nathan Heaney. Yeah, that, that is a big name, but um, there's other big names out there who I can fight on the headlining. Um, as I said before, I'm ready. Are they ready? And just let's get it on. It's on my phone call away. Connor, who, who are you looking at matching the likes with Idris up? Yeah, well, I think speaking to to Scott and Ben, um, they're really ambitious with, with where Idris is at. Um, they talk about the stories of him inspiring and and how qu uh, the quality work that he puts in there, and you know, not to mention names, but people that he's he's been sparring, that he's been you know really really um, overpowering and in the gym. So. so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not to mention na mention that. <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll leave that to to Mr. Love Island over there. To, uh, but no, uh, they're really ambitious. You know, I'm I'm putting names towards them. Where myself, Mick, 
John are looking at names and you know they want more they want better quality they want to be pushing on to you know it was even something after the last fight they want to step up to eight rounds really to make a statement um to show how progressive th they want to be with um with Idris so yeah no I think it's um uh, it's going to be exciting and as you said this first eight rounder now on Friday and then hopefully kick on for for title fights in, in 2022 well thank you for coming up again none of this matters the only thing that matters is that you guys tune in and Idris puts on a good performance on Friday night Thank you very much. Once again, we're going to get Isaac Chamberlain joining me now. And uh, the new! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice one. Thank you. So, Isaac Chamberlain, as we know, his opponent's going to be here, Dylan Prazovic, very, very soon. Isaac, it's good to see you back. Uh, you, yeah, you can sit there. Good to see you, Bobby, as well. Isaac, how are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Bobby, how about yourself? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. So, big fight, um, biggest fight in a, in a while, this one. Obviously, a world title fight that your opponent's coming off the back of, and he's at world level. Yeah, yeah, I'm very, very excited. You know, we've been doing tremendous work. We've had a great training camp with uh, Bobby Mills, my coach, and my assistant coach, Connor Ward. You know, we've been working tremendously hard, you know, and we've really prepared, as you can see. You're going to see at the way in the, way, the shape that I'm going to be in because of the work that I put in, you know, we based us we based ourselves away in Birmingham because, you know, uh, my child was born two weeks ago, you know, and um, congratulations, thank you, <laughs> and yeah, um, it was such a surreal moment. Now it's something that I'm fighting for, you know, I'm fighting for my son, I'm fighting for my missus, I'm fighting for my little family, and that's so motivating for me. It makes me go up early in the morning and do my work and do my runs and do my training, even when I don't feel like it. And credit to my coaching team, um, Bobby and Connor, because the work that they put into me is it's, it's amazing. You know, they, it took, they took time out of their normal work schedules, and I have nothing but respect and admiration for both of them. And your headline, and this is your hometown, um, you must be extremely excited about that specifically as well. Oh, yeah, I'm very, very excited. You know, I ain't fought in London for a long time. And to be back with all my people there, you know, everybody's going to be coming. <laughs> well, but I want to come to you. What's it like working with Idris day in, day out? Obviously, he had a gap. He had a time off Isaac. with a shoulder injury. <laughs> Isaac, what did I just say? You said Idris, bro. Sorry. <laughs> well, it happens. <laughs> it, uh, Isaac, yeah, what's it like working with him day in, day out? Obviously, he had the shoulder injury, but he's back now. He had a yeah. round one stoppage um, and it ended after round one. Yeah, do you know what? He is a pleasure to train. He's a real student of the game. He always wants to learn, so he's always eager for more information. Um, he's always asking questions mm -hmm. and to train someone like that is a real pleasure and it's quite refreshing so um, you know he's he's ready he's been training like he said in Birmingham for the last four weeks um, and taking him away and putting him sort of just in a training camp where he focused on nothing but his training um, his nutrition all parts all elements of his program he's as you can see from the shape he's in he's he's ready well, here we have Dylan Brazovic about to meet each other for the first time um, thank you for joining us Dylan Second fight in the UK this year. Good to see you, first of all. Thank you very much for being oh, here. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Second fight in the UK this year. Then talk to us about um, this fight on Friday. How excited are you? I'm not good with English, but uh, I can say something. Uh, I'm uh, travel all day and I'm very tired. <laughs> I can't wait three days fighting and uh, better let win. You're not going to be tired on Friday, you're going to be ready. Yeah, I'm ready, <laughs> always ready. Are you going to translate, is that all right? As in, uh, you can speak in first language and then we can translate, is that all right? <laughs> okay. No, no, it's fine, I thought you said you don't speak. Okay, no worries, no worries. So, the, the winner of this fight is likely going to be top 15 with the IBF. There's no number one ranked with the IBF at the moment. Are you looking to potentially fight Maris Breeders? Obviously, you've just come off a world title fight, but another one potentially? We are not that good at English. Uh, uh, Maris Breeders, potentially, if you're, if you're successful, obviously. There's a lot at stake on Friday, first of all, but is he someone that you'd like to fight? Of course. 
And, and as, you, as for yourself, obviously, that's a big statement that needs to be made on, on, on Friday night. Do you feel like you have to carry him with the likes of Lawrence Okoli, who's knocked him out in round three, and you're going to get compared to him a lot? Does that put pressure on you to knock out Prasovic over here on Friday? Not at all. Not at all, because um, Prasovic is a elite-level fighter. You know, this is at the world stage. You know, the winner of this could potentially fight for a world title. You know, so I'm not going to compare my performance with Lawrence's because at this level, you know, anything can happen. You know, you have to come in with the right mindset. And, um, you know, um, I really appreciate Prasovic for taking this fight. We've asked um, many, many fighters as they've declined. You know, Alexei Papin, um, Ryad Murphy, we asked. We asked... Um, Alexei Tushenko, he's the gold medalist, he declined, you know, because we, we really want to establish ourselves as the best in the division. So um, massive credit to Prasovic, you know, a great fighter, and can't wait for Friday. Why did you take this fight? Because obviously you've had a fight this year in the UK. What made you want to come over again? This is my chance. So I'm not afraid of nobody, and I want to fight. What did you learn in your last fight against Lawrence Okoli? That uh, I'm, I'm uh, uh, how I say, funny on sometimes I don't know some just to be to be able 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 my best, and we will see in Friday. How much have you changed since that fight, and what have you been working on as well? I'm not have uh, big time. I I am uh, focus on my my one tactic, and uh, I will show in the Friday. And as for yourself, obviously your last opponent wasn't to the level of the man standing to the left of me, sitting to the left. This one's a big fight. How much have you prepared, and how frustrated were you actually with the the way the last one ended? It was after round one, but it seemed oh. like you needed more rounds to learn a bit. I ain't really focused on the past, you know, I'm focused on the present and, and what's happening in front of me. You have to take every fight step by step because um, every, every fight that you have is very important. So I'm just focused on um, preparing for what's in front of me and then after we move forward. Every fighter in, in camp and especially in fight week, they vision what's going to happen. They vision walk into the ring. How do you envision this Friday night going main event? I'm just going to take everything in my stride. You know, visualizing winning, visualizing um, winning in an emphatic fashion, you know, and being the best that I can be because I still think people haven't seen my real potential. So I'm just ready uh, to go. What What are we going to see from you, particularly this Friday, but also in the near future? Because, like I say, the likes of Maris Breeders, you're going to be ranked near enough number one if you have another couple of wins in 2022. That fight's it's potential that's close for it. It's close. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But the main thing is just focusing on what's in front of me. You can't get too um, too ahead of yourself. You know, as John Pegg has said before many times in the gym, you know, you're on the stairs. You have to take one step at a time. You can't jump stairs. You know, you can't jump the steps. So you have to really take everything in its stride one by one. I have a great team, I'm an amazing team. You know, I have to big up Mick Hennessy for everything that he's done for me. You know, thank you to Michael Sal as well. Make f to all the guys because they've done a tremendous job. Why is this the right fight for you at the right time, this man here? Because he just came off a world title fight. You know, he's very, very highly ranked. He's a very good boxer as well. Previously, he was undefeated, you know. So he's a very, very, very good boxer. And I have to bring my game. You know, I have to bring my game, and that's what I've prepared mentally for. So it's going to be great on, on Friday. You know, me, my coach, Bobby, has created a great game plan, and I'm just ready to go. And as for yourself, what, what do you feel like you're going to bring differently this time? everything for me give everything every time but this man what do you think he's going to bring to the ring what what have you worked on what do you think he's going to bring into the ring on friday night what are you looking for in this man i i'm not uh, have good, uh, big time and i'm not uh, look uh, isaac but i look uh, one match with okoli and he's good boxer and uh, he's young and uh, I, I don't know. We will see in Friday everything. We'll definitely see. Fireworks guaranteed. These two both love knockouts. It's live and it's always free with Hennessy Sports on Channel 5. 10.30pm. Do not miss it. And 5.30pm 
on YouTube for the undercard. We'll square these guys off now. Thank you very much.